can start a little bit with Hammarby maybe, because uh, you joined the club at the end of April. Mm -hmm. You came here in, uh, on the 23rd, I guess, and, and the first five games, you lost all five games, mm. but only by, uh, by one goal. Yeah. So it was pretty close. But So what's your view on that first period? Of yeah, it's frustrating. I mean, we were in the games. We had a little bit of misfortune in the majority. So we lost um, in the 93rd minute, last last kick of the game. So yeah, to, yeah. yeah um, to lose like that is disappointing. And then um, the game before that against you, Gordon, it was, I mean, they had limited chances. We had just as many chances, but it just so happened that um, the goal, the ball was like millimeters away from being deflected out, but it went in. So um, I think the way the team's performed hasn't been um, too bad and I think we've actually deserved a lot out of those five games but yes. we've walked away with no points which is frustrating that is football. What does it need to turn things around now? Um, well we've had a change in coach so Angelian left us at the start of the week um, and a new coach Isaac has come in he's quite young and he's worked with um, the youth men's side mm -hmm. um, I think he'll hopefully be able to identify the areas that aren't working so well because he can come in with a fresh outlook um, and hopefully in the next two games we can get some points together because they're really important. I think you said once that, that you understand, uh, you can read the game very well. Somebody said it about you maybe. Okay. So some, I guess you're able to read Hamabu's game very well after five, mm. or four or five matches. Yeah. So what, what's your, what has to be approved to actually um, win? Many things. I mean, it depends on the style of football we want to play. I mean, I don't want to come in and impose my style because I'm a player. Um, at the end of the day, the coach dictates the style that we play. But um, when I come in and, and I see how we play, I think there's lots of things we could improve on. Um, the most obvious for me is how passive we are in defense. We kind of look like we're making pressure, but it's not real pressure. So I think if we can turn that into real pressure, which doesn't allow teams to actually play, um, and we improve that, um, especially the way that we rest in defense, a lot of the times we're reactive. So instead of being in the right position in defense while we have the ball, we're not in the right position. And when we do lose the ball, we're too far off and we can't keep that pressure. Yeah. I think if you change little things like that within the game, which are very simple, yeah. um, you can really start to turn these results around. Yeah. The scoring doesn't seem to be a problem. because I think you scored like, you're among the four best teams in the league uh, but in terms of scoring goals. Yeah, I mean, the first two games before I got here, we scored a lot. Yeah. And then yeah. I've come and we haven't. So. <laughs> Um, I think that is another area we can improve on. We've created chances, but kind of only half chances. Um, so I think if we can start to turn that around a lot as well and work out how to make these clear goal-scoring chances, um, I think that'll help a lot. Hmm. I, I saw that you have, you have lots of experience and, and you played in Denmark, you, of course you played in Australia, and you played in Japan, uh, in Germany and now in Sweden. Um, yeah, how, does, how do you think Damas Hanskans looks compared to the other leagues you've played in, to the Australian or to the Japanese or the German? Yeah, every league's different. It's interesting. Every league that you go to has different qualities, a different style of play, um, different training facilities, different um, training environments, different training plans. So I think, I don't have an answer what's the best, but it's just really good to experience everything. Um, I think here in Sweden you do things very similar to how we do them in Australia. So the training week looks similar to how, how we do it. Um, and the style of football is similar too. So it's more of a controlled game. Um, you do play quite direct when you need to, but at the same time it's not the high pressure that we had in Germany. And it made it really difficult to play. How did you actually get to Japan? It's quite unusual that somebody mm. goes to Japan. Yeah, there was a number of internationals that have gone there, um, especially from Australia. I think mm. there's been four or five of us. Mm. That's um, only like eight least. hours away from Australia. Yeah, so I think there was a period in the Nadeshiko League mm. that they really wanted to bring in foreigners mm. and they started to put a lot of money and effort into it. Mm. And I also had a, a contact at home in Brisbane mm. um, who, who coaches females but has a Japanese wife. Mm -hmm. So he has very good links um, mm. with the Japanese. And he usually takes school groups and club groups oh. over. Um, so he had, he had made contacts to clubs through that. Um, and then found out that maybe I was interested and my best friend was interested mm. and discussions just started. And since then, yeah, a number of Australians have gone. A few oh. Americans too. Mm. Okay. Um, you've lived in, on three continents, no? Australia, Asia and, and Europe. 
And uh, I guess from every country you bring something with you, you take something home with you or for your personal um, life experience. It's, it's yeah, life experience, mm. definitely. In terms of physical things, not really, because mm. I don't have a permanent home. Mm. So when I, <laughs> when I buy things, you have to put mm. them somewhere and yeah. it gets really difficult. Um, so for me, it's probably, I collect photos more than anything. Mm. I really love photography, so um, I have a lot of photo albums that I don't know what I'll do with at the end of the day, but I probably could um, start some sort of, like, I don't know, postcard business. They're just such beautiful, it's not really what I want to do, but I could do it. Um, they're such beautiful pictures in so many mm. places I've been in the world. What, what are you taking? What kind of pictures are you taking? Anything. Anything that I find... Um, that captures kind of the experience that I've had. Mm -hmm. I usually, it, I don't usually do um, like photography of people. I try mm -hmm. to avoid faces and people with small landscapes. Um, but anything that encapsulates like the culture or mm -hmm. the place that I'm at. Yeah. Have you heard of Vivian Meyer? No, I haven't. She's oh, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, the woman in New York, in, in America, who I think she was discovered after her death yeah. as a photographer. Because there's, there's a song from the Manic Street Creatures on the new album called Vivian, and, and it's about her. Okay. That's interesting. But are you are you not publishing your pictures? Are you um, Flickr or something or blog? I'm a pretty private person, but mm. I do have a couple of albums on a website. But mm. I'm not. I don't keep it up to date. I'm pretty relaxed with it. It's not like my priority or anything. Mm. Isn't is that a future? Um, it's more of a hobby you? because I know it you're a be. pharmacist as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. Studied pharmacy. Um, mm. Did that in Australia. I'm not doing that anymore at mm. all. Um, but it, yeah, kind of something to bring it all together, like to mm. a way to remember your travels as well as keep you busy in your spare time. I mean, it's it's a fun hobby. It sounds also pretty a little bit tough to, to live so far away from home. Mm. Very hard, isn't it? Yeah, mm. I mean, I probably found it the most difficult in Germany because I was there for so long. I mm. think. The more you keep moving and the more you keep traveling, the easier it is because mm. you're just always looking for the next adventure, mm. the next high. Mm. But when you really do ground yourself in a new country for mm. a long time, it gets quite difficult because you yeah. get over that initial, oh, initial. Um, mm. It's like almost like a honeymoon period where you're like, oh, this is a great yeah. city. I want to go out and do the tourist things. Mm. And then you really do hit that reality where mm. you're like, wow, I don't have any family around me anymore. And mm. it is a little bit lonely. So you always make new friends and new colleagues, yeah. like in, in the teams you play, but then you leave at some point again. That must be pretty tough. Yeah, that is mm. hard. That's probably the worst part of the job, I think, mm. having these great connections. And then at the end of the day, knowing that you're probably going to have to leave at some yeah. point. I think that's maybe the biggest downside of, of what we do, I think, mm. having to say goodbye. You, 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 you've been to Japan and to, to Denmark, to Germany and Sweden. Have you learned a little bit of the languages or some phrases in every language now? Yeah, I mean, mm. in Sweden I've probably been the laziest mm. because everyone yeah. speaks such great English. Mm. But in Japan, no one spoke English. Mm. It was very difficult. Um, so we had to learn basic things just mm. to communicate on the field. Yeah. Um, They're so shy in Japan. I've been to Japan and, mm. and I think they understand a little bit, but they, they are too afraid to answer. Yeah, that's my yeah. yeah they are. They're, they're very beautiful people, but at the mm. same time, they're very timid and shy. Mm. So, um, But they were very helpful. Even mm. though we couldn't communicate, they were probably the friendliest people I've ever met. Mm. Um, and in, G in Germany, I was forced to learn because mm. everything within the team was in mm. German and I just felt so isolated. Um, after the maybe first six to nine months, mm. it was okay. I thought, yeah, I mean, people are translating, it's okay. Mm. But then I got to the point where I thought, I need to stay, take a step yeah. and start to learn. And if I'm going to be here a long time, it'll be worthwhile. Hmm. You played with Amanda Ilyssa, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Playing tonight against Croatia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's a good friend. She's come to visit already in Stockholm. Okay. Yeah, she came over. Oh, great. Um, actually, you, you, you had planned to, to join Seattle Rain, and uh, mm. you were supposed to play with Megan Rapino and with uh, American Fires yeah. and Rumi Utsugi, I think, from Japan. But you couldn't because uh, they have. Kind of, yeah. The, it's very difficult to understand the American league and its rules because mm. North Carolina College was interested in you, and that's why you're locked. You were locked for Seattle, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's called a mm. discovery list. Mm. So, if a club discovers you, mm. um, they can have the rights to sign you, and no mm. other club can. And a discovery list is simply a list. Mm. Like it's something you just put a name on, and you suddenly yeah. you suddenly own something of that player. Mm. Um, and you do that without the player knowing, and 
management knowing. I mean, it just happens kind of randomly. You think that randomly. it's legit that, that they do it like this? Because it's, it's how it really happens, weird. yeah. Oh. It's, it's how they run the system, which is really bizarre. No one else yeah. in the world does this. And I guess I learned the hard way because um, I got stuck in a hard position where I ha didn't have a club. Hmm. So um, it's unfortunate and I don't want that to happen to anyone else. Hmm. Um, and I wish it wasn't like that, but unfortunately they're the rules that the NWSL runs by and you have hmm. to be aware of it and um, be careful when you do try and transfer between hmm. leagues because if you are a player that clubs um, are potentially interested hmm. in, you can really find yourself in a bit of trouble because they do trade your rights. Yeah. They move it around the league, you know. Mm. It's, it's that's why Kristen Press is here, because she didn't want to go to Texas. Yeah, I mm. mean, that's, I think it's a, it's a little bit of a different story, but at the end of the yeah, day, of course, yeah. it's still mm. to do with NWSL's um, laws around how, mm. they, how they run the league. Mm. Yeah. But you wanted to play in Seattle. You, yeah, yeah that's, that is there. who I tried to do the, mm. the trance, because I was signed at Potsdam until 2019, mm. so I arranged an early release mm. um, to get to Seattle but unfortunately um, Carolina had the rights to mm. me and that prevented me from transferring. Yeah. So what do you do now because you have a short time contract here are you just here for a couple few weeks until July 7 is the last game I suppose for the summer break? Yeah. Is Prashant Scott or are you staying Yeah here? We're, we're still in um, discussion so mm. Staying is also is an option. Mm. Yeah, I'm really enjoying my time in Stockholm. Mm. I enjoy I'm enjoying the club. Mm. Um, so I, I have no problem with staying. It's just um, really a discussion that needs to happen in the next one, two, three yeah. weeks, and, and we'll find a solution. But I'm but definitely thinking about it. But you, you sleep well. It's not that you're nervous or what's going to happen. What's going to happen now? No, I mean the worst time for me was probably in February mm. when um, when I left Potsdam and, and didn't have a new club because mm. of. Um, the NWSL transfer rights so for me that was the worst time where I was just waiting 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 mm. I just I wanted to have an answer yeah um, I said you're, you're a pharmacist how, how did you came to pharmacy as a subject uh, is that in the family maybe? Uh, not at all just through after school mm. um, doing the career tests what are your strengths what mm. are your your passions what are you good at um, mm. academically and it came up with like chemistry science mm. and um, assuming I was going to keep playing football, the working kind of roster, the lifestyle mm. would have fit with mm. football. Um, but now that I've actually moved overseas, it completely doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't function at all. But um, studying the topic was interesting. I really am interested in health, mm. so I have value in that. Mm. Um, but working the job itself was maybe not as satisfying as what I'd hoped. So mm. uh, when I finish with football, I'm still not entirely sure what I'll do. Mm. I don't think I'll be a pharmacist. I guess you're, you're going to be a photographer. <laughs> I mean, that would because be easy. That's, that's an amazing uh, way of, to, to be an artist. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I'm not sure how you financially make it happen, but it would be a dream, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> like, like Brian Adams, he, he's a rock singer, but he's also a very good photographer. Yeah. He's a little portrait. But, um, yeah, you're a football player, but I also saw that you're a sailor. You do mm. a lot of sailing, and I saw it on Instagram, actually, that you sailed recently here in Stockholm. Right? Yeah. So how did you come to say Is that because you grew up at the coast? Um, yeah, my father, so east coast, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the East Coast. Mm. So we have a lot of boats in my family mm. and we spend a lot of time on the water. And my dad um, has sailed all his life. Mm. So he's, he was a teacher, school teacher, mm. but he's retired now and he's a sailing coach, mm. sailing teacher. Um, and just naturally he would sail and my mum used to crew, mm. so they used to sail a boat together, but mm. my mum's not really... Um, how do I say it nice she doesn't it's not her passion sailing is not yeah. her passion mm. um, so she, she sort of she sort of did it just to fulfill dad's mm. um, wish really so as soon as my brother and I were old mm. enough we jumped on the boat instead mm. of her and then of course when you get to the age you want to steer yourself we're like, mm. I want my own boat so then you just progress through and but you sit on the open on the Pacific Ocean now can you or um, it depends. Well, in, a, in where I live, we've got um, some flat water, mm -hmm. um, which is enclosed by an mm -hmm. island, so we get to sail on the mm -hmm. flat water. But um, when you go to another regatta at another mm -hmm. city, you do f you sail on the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the setup. I mean, sailing on the ocean, there's bigger waves and rougher seas, so mm -hmm. it is a bit more yeah. exciting. But flat water sailing is probably 
um, better for racing. Reasonable. Yeah. More reasonable, I guess, as well. Yeah, it, it's better the suited. Smell, I guess I, I have no idea. Yeah, it's better suited to smaller like dinghies because hmm. you don't have the big waves to contend with. Hmm. Um, but like recently, my dad and I sailed out in the ocean um, in a Hobie Cat regatta, so we hmm. do go offshore sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. I guess you come from a very sportive family. Your brother has played football too, hasn't he? Yeah, the a place. little bit. No, he doesn't. He's an architect. He's oh, pretty okay. like creative mm -hmm. and, and into that. He uses that part of his brain. Whereas um, I'm probably the, the sportiest person in the family. Dad's always active. Um, he does all water sports like surfing mm. and sailing and windsurfing. Um, he doesn't he doesn't play football? So mm. kind of just fell into football. I think. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't pushed from anyone in my family. Mm. You have you have amazing amazing record. I mean, twenty eleven you were already in the in the FIFA eleven of the World Championship, weren't you? Yeah. You were like twenty of them, or yeah, twenty turning twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Great, That's amazing. Mm. Um, but um, another thing is that in Sweden we discussed uh, last week the um, FIFA thing. I don't know if, if you read about it. That FIFA is paying like every men's club that sends players to the World Championship in Russia now. Uh, I actually. Googled uh, ten thousand five hundred Australian dollars per day for just sending the player to the World Championships, wow. and and it starts like two weeks in advance. So every team, every club that's sending players to the World Championship gets now fourteen uh, ten thousand five hundred Australian dollars a day um, until they are eliminated from the tournament. So if if you go to the final, a club like Bayern Munich or something sending player there, if if the player goes to the final, they get. 450,000 Australian dollars per player uh, and the women's well, clubs which send players to uh, like next year to France mm. they, would, they would get zero yeah. cent um, if they don't change the rules until then what, what's your reaction on that because there was a lot of reaction in, in the Swedish it's, media a, mass it's a massive inequality it's, oh. it really really highlights um, how big the inequality is. I mean, we're so aware of the difference, for instance, in prize money. We know mm. as a fact that the women come nowhere near mm. any, they're not even in the ballpark of what the men are being rewarded. Mm. Um, and I think um, it's an area that has to change. And I think there will be active steps leading into the next World Cup mm. where this will be, try will, will be challenged. And I think groups will come together and they will try and challenge FIFA and mm. start to demand more for the women, mm. because I think it's the only way the game is going to mm. progress. I mean, if we don't start asking for more, if we don't have more of a budget to, to improve the game with, how's the game going to improve? The game and the organization, everything around. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they can, it's not just as, at an individual at an individual basis. Mm. So it's not just about a player earning money. It's about how can that money get back to these federations to then increase their national team budget? So how mm. can they have better training facilities, more international games? Mm. I mean, I know, for instance, in Australia, our national team budget just isn't big enough. It's mm. never big enough. Mm. You know, we want to play more, we want to train more, but mm. there's just never enough money mm. to allow that to happen. Mm. So if it comes down from FIFA, fantastic. It'll um, be a lot of mm. um, relief off, off our shoulders. What's 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 uh, the situation in Australia between men's and women's football? Is there a um, huge difference? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, I don't think nowhere in the world is there. I mean, a difference that isn't extravagant. It's but in every the, single country. The Norwegians get the same payment uh, now than they are with I the national team. I think so. With the national yeah, team, national but team. if you look at the whole grand scale of mm. what the men and the women are. Yeah. At the end of the day, being rewarded, mm. I'm sure it's still mm. it's still massive. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, We're almost finished. How do you spend your time in Stockholm when you are a professional football player here? Yeah, well, I've been actually been pretty busy. I don't know what I've been doing. Um, Mum and Dad came to visit for three mm. weeks, so we've been tourists for three mm. weeks. I've only been here for five weeks. And your mother walked in with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. That was one of the mm. best times in my career. I mm. think having mum being able to walk out onto mm. the pitch in such a big stadium. Mm. She's never done that before. I mean, mm. she's never played professional sport, yeah. so she wouldn't have been in that type of environment. Mm. And she got to come into the change room and mm. look at the facilities that mm. we use. And yeah, it was really cool. Um, and then outside of that, um, I bought a bike, so I enjoy mm. bike riding. Mm. Um, got beautiful forests around where I stay. Um, and then between training and the gym, I mean, I fill my time with doing online study mm. courses or 
I'm part of our players association back mm. in Australia, so I'm always yeah. um, on emails. So you're engaging questions like that. Justice. Exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, trying to progress the game yeah. and, and helping on bigger issues than <laughs> just being a player. I read you said once that w whenever you get interested in something, you, you're you like a sponge that yeah. wants to, to get all the information about yeah. the topic. Yeah. And that's good. And, and finally, I read that you are interested in alternative music. Yeah, I mean, I like Australian music. I don't yeah. think many people listen to. Australian music, but I always listen to Triple J, it's a radio mm. station back home. Okay. Um, so I flick that on, on and yeah, yeah, just the online app, mm. and I can listen to live radio. So, um, I think I realized that I was losing touch a bit with Australia when mm. people, when I would come home and people would say, What's your accent? And I'm, mm. I'm Australian. Mm. <laughs> so I think listening to Australian speak on the radio and listening to our mm. music is a good thing. Have you heard uh, Can't Cope? No. You should listen to it, it's a band from. Melbourne, uh, Victoria. Okay. And uh, they're playing like uh, indie rock and. Like Sounds like what I'd like. Courtney Bartnett from yeah. the United States, like, compared to. I heard them this week, so. Okay. Thank you very much.